This might be the most painful one we've ever done. Arr! <laughs> I'm left eye dominant. He doesn't look that stupid. These guys, these guys look ridiculous. We're wearing eye patches on. We're only gonna look at one card today while we play. That's yes. the secret. We'll see who can win the most money. This is so itchy. Honestly guys, I think the eye patch is gonna be an absolute devastation of the challenge. I can't believe I agreed to do this. This is gonna be so stupid. Yeah, so my strategy here is to just wait and play really good configurations. I think I have the most short stack strategy, so I feel good about this challenge. Arg, gonna look for the big cards. That's what they tell you. And I'm also gonna buy in short, more like a tournament strategy. Shove the big cards, don't have to think too much. And then when we get a big stack, we'll play some cards. First hand, I peel a king. We are clearly handicapped, so I only sit with $100. Here we are, and we aren't shying away from the action. I make it $10 to go, and now someone makes it 30. There's one caller, and then it's on to me. Folding is probably what's best here, but this hand wouldn't be included if that was the case. I call for $20 more, just hoping we can spike a king somehow. We brick the flop as expected when we are only looking for one of three possible cards in the deck. Me and the other caller check, and the three better bets $100 this time. We both quickly relinquish our cards. Clearly calling three bets while handicapped like this is not a sound strategy. So let's try something a little different when we peel the king of spades. As you can see, my chips are already all in the middle. There was a cutoff open to $17. The button called and I said let's run it in the small blind. Guaranteeing ourselves the ability to see all five cards and possibly have some fold equity seems like a much better option than what we did last hand. And that is all until the cutoff calls without hesitation. The button folds and let's see what we are up against. King oh boy. King Queen? Yeah, that's it. All right, I'm rebuying. I might gamble, go max gamble, max buy, and try to double up, so. Hi, Rosie. What's up, man? Jack's been all in twice on me. I've been here 10 minutes. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> this is so uncomfortable. It really is. I can't see shit. First hand for me is the Ace of Clubs, off to a great start. We are under the gun plus one with 77 in our stack and we limp in, trying to incite a great squeeze spot. Let's see what happens. Under the gun plus two limps, hijack opens to 20, cutoff calls, button calls. Magical. If our almost 4x jam here takes this down, our stack of 77 increases by 65 without even having to see a flop or even knowing what our hand actually is. I'm all in. Plus two folds. But it's Texas, so we get not one, but two callers in the hijack and button who actually reshoves for not much more, about 110. So we now have a triple up opportunity and we head to a run out of 5-7 deuce, king, 5 with clubs. The button shows the very jam worthy king 7 offsuit, of course. The hijack mucks and we need the second card to be an ace or a club to take this down. And it is the offsuit deuce. Chips. We've been playing super tight and apparently the other boys have not been. We peel a beautiful queen of hearts on the button, perfect spot to get involved in our first hand of the day. There's an order position limp, a couple limpers to my right. We could have queens, ace queen or queen deuce. Fuck, that is terrifying. I raise down up to $21. The small blind calls right away, so I already know what's gonna happen. Big blind, EP, hijack, and cutoff come along as well. So we're six ways to a flop, which comes ace, queen, six. The big blind goes ahead and donks out for 25 bucks. We love Texas one too. EP folds, hijack makes the call, cutoff folds. So this board and his bet is very weak on this board. It's exactly why I started short stack so I could do something like this. All you can eat, baby. This just puts immediate pressure on all weak ace X and we have a second card. So if they call, we're always live unless they have pocket sixes exactly, which is usually check raise anyway. Too much dead money not to go all in here and the big blind is questioning it, but he makes the fold and we get pump faked by the hijack before he fold as well. Turns out we have queen and nine suited, nice. Really can't ask for anything better than that result. 
You guys know Jonathan Little. You know he's an amazing poker player. You might also know that he has a great site called PokerCoaching.com, and they're having an epic fall sale right now from October 3rd to October 9th. We're going to have an exclusive link in our description box below for our fans that get you an even better discount. Check it out before they go off sale. It's going to be awesome. The Ace of Spades is supposed to be the best card in the deck. Let's see if it holds true. Now that we've gotten our first buy-in out of the way, the nerves are settled. There's six limps to me. I could limp. I could raise, but both of those options are likely going to require us to play some sort of guessing game. Let's see who wants to gamble. I'm all in for my newly purchased $100 worth of chips. The small blind now calls. That's not a good sign. We are up against pocket eights and head to a board of queen six six, jack, deuce. We flip over our mystery card and it's a nine. We can't beat two pair and on to the next bullet. Third time is not the charm. A nice hand. Look, it's dumb and dumber. <laughs> Fighting for the same treasure. Argument. <laughs> I'm already stuck $300. Switch to Jack's table, so naturally we peel a Jack in our first hand. Fold. Rosie. Fold. Under the gun with 90 in our stack, we limp, looking for another good squeeze spot, and sure enough, the action player in the cutoff opens to 10. The button calls, the small blind calls, and Jack in the big blind calls. This time, our jam is 9 times the raise size, way more likely to get through, and we profit 40 if it does get through, increasing our stack by almost 50%, again, without seeing a flop or even our second card. I'm all in. The initial aggressor does fold. We see the promised land for about five seconds before the first caller calls the 90. Small blind folds and Jack decides. I might gamble, go max gamble, max buy, and try to double up, so. He wants to gamble with whatever one card he's got. I don't think it's a very high one because he probably would have gone all in before me if it was high. <laughs> what, do you have a face card? Tell me uh, your face card. Maybe, maybe not, yeah. If you don't, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm gonna kill you. Our opponent shows an ace just before its brother appears in the window, and when we don't improve and peel the offsuit six as our second card, it's time for bullet number three. This might be the most painful one we've ever done. Yeah. Like, I actually genuinely think that. I don't know if any of you have tried this before, but like... I can attest, it is brutal. <laughs> I'm down $600. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yep, that's all I can say. <laughs> While I'm doing the opposite of Jello and folding almost everything, we did get our favorite dealer to participate in our shenanigans. She actually was killing it, like dealing with one eye until the floor came and I feel a little bad for getting her in some trouble. Whoopsie. Respect to all the 2023 pirates out there. This is miserable. <laughs> Sorry. The king hasn't worked out for us, neither has the ace. Let's try the queen out for a change. There's a late position open to $12. Like I said before, I think calling bets is almost never gonna work in our favor. I ship it all in for a little over $80. This player calls and we head to a run out and in the window, what do you know, a queen. Oh, well, let's go. You know what they say, third bullet's a charm. Well, not this time. Uh, show them something. I got a queen. Queens and fours, king picker. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have the most short stack strategy, so I feel good about this challenge. Right. The table gets a laugh out of my misery. We're coming back for revenge when we peel another queen next hand, though. If you haven't been able to tell, I'm in the gambling mood tonight. There's an open to $12, two callers, and I once again am shipping my stack in the middle. Maybe with our tight image, we can get one through. Tight, 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 yeah! The first player calls, the second player calls, but at least the third player folds. Looking on the bright side though, we've now got a chance to triple up. I'm not sure why I flipped the camera, so y'all get to see my beautiful face reacting to the board instead of the run out, and although I have no clue what the board was anymore, I'm pretty sure my reaction and my lack of chips in front of me means that we lost this one, guys. Oh, I was drawn dead. God damn. This game is so fucking locked. Here we peel a nine, but we're in a bomb pot, and the boards are nine seven deuce rainbow and ace six five rainbow. I see top pair, I see 45 in the middle. I'm all in for 92 bucks, and we get one caller on the button. Off to the turns of the three of clubs, queen of diamonds, off to the rivers of the three of diamonds, ten of hearts. We somehow still have top pair on the top board, and top pair quickly turns into top boat when we realize our other card was a nine as well. Wow. What's even crazier is our opponent shows pocket kings, meaning our naked nine would have gotten us scooped. Thankfully, we survived this one and finally take down some profit. 
Next hand for us, we peel a four in the big blind. There are three limpers to me. Let's go see a flop, which comes jack, nine, four, two hearts. I check, early position bets $10, guide to his left calls, and with bottom pair, we're trying to get a river so we could peel our other card. We just make the call. The turn is an ace, and we check again and face a bet of $25 and another call. He should be scared of that ace unless he has two pair plus, and unless we have another four in the hole, which is a lot less unlikely than other BS we're gonna have here, I think it's time to fold our hand. Let's see the other card before we do. Holy fuck, it's an ace. No, God, no, God, please, no. And we still have to fold per the rules at this time. To make matters worse, we get to see what he had by the river, and he shows a worse two pair with jack nine. Cue the misery in three, two, one. I've paused this video for a good reason. We have the biggest announcement in the history of Next Gen Poker. We have partnered with Poker Stars North America. The biggest poker company in the entire world is now partnered with Next Gen. That means our video is gonna be so much better given the resources they have and First off, to mark that announcement, I have the biggest giveaway we've ever done. Total value $5,000, which includes a free roll into the NAPT, the first Poker Stars North American tournament in 10 years, a free buy-in for a main event, which is worth $1,650, a seven-night hotel stay in Las Vegas, and by the way, F1's coming up the week after. Flight credit worth $500. That is all for one of you guys. Check down the link in the description on how to enter that competition, and then we're hosting a content creator live stream, and some of your your favorite names are gonna be there. The biggest names in the poker industry, rising up and coming stars, Corey Iring, Casino King, Sethi Poker, and Cairo. Alex Wolfgang Poker, I better see you there. He's not confirmed, but I already texted him. Peaks will be catering free dinner for everyone. Beers are $2, mixed drinks are $5, and guys, the drinks will be flowing as we play an epic cash game live stream with you guys. Can't wait to see you all there. Back to the video. Let's try a king again, a guy who just lost a stack, had $11, he goes all in. I reshove my $80 stack, everyone else folds, and we finally win one with king five offsuit. It feels so good to win my first hand of the night. Thank you. Uh, this should be the thumbnail. Give it a thumbnail. <laughs> thumbnail, thumbnail. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do you smell that? It kind of smells like a comeback. We've got the ace of clubs and quite the image at the table. There's four limps. Let's see who wants to play for it all. I jam my stack in the middle. It folds around to the small blind who is really getting a kick out of watching me get stacked over and over again. Hey. 80 total. Alright, I'll give you action. I'll give you action. I'll give you action. I'll give you action. <laughs> one time, one previous time. Best. Oh, you already got it. Okay, nice hit. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty. Keep the hot train oh running. Let's go. <laughs> the hot streak is live, baby. We see the king of spades here. We're in the small blind, under the gun limps, under the gun plus one limps, under the gun plus two limps, and the low jack, the action player, opens it up to twenty. Gets to us. We go all in for what is one hundred sixteen dollars. Folds all the way to the low jack who thinks about it, as you can see, looks in pain, toys with his cards, and makes the call. We're off to a run out versus a loose player in an over $200 pot. Flop. 10-3 deuce rainbow, turn, four of spades, river, king. Let's go. And better yet, guys, we peel our actual hand, and it is pocket kings, meaning we just rivered top set. And our opponent shows king-queen offsuit as he tosses his cards in the muck, and we scoop a big one. As you can see, two hands later, we're in the cutoff and get an ace. Under the gun limps, under the gun plus one limps, and jack in the hijack raises to 20. Jack's raising wide and with only 50% of his cards visible, so we go all in for $220. Folds back to Jack, who thinks about it, makes the fold, and we see pocket aces. Yeah, I wish I knew I had aces, so could raise a little bit smaller, but the eye patch says that is not allowed. But nevertheless, a fun little stretch, and we're on to the next one. All right, I need to call the boys over. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting absolutely smacked right now. I'm in for seven buy-ins, and I'm, I'm actually, getting killed. I'm actually up 100 right yeah. now, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> this is really hard. I'm not down seven buy-ins. I'm not up 100 in the middle, but... But so what I was proposing is to make this a little easier, get us to play a little bit more poker, Let's allow us to look at the second card after the turn. You guys down? I'm As fine in, with it. We get to the turn. Once we get to the turn, you can peel okay. both cards. Got it. Got it. 
Let's just start. Let's go. All right, let's go. We're in the big blind with a juicy eight of clubs. I'm joking. There's a limp, an ice load of $20, small blind calls, and we're gonna have a lot of suited hands here that we could call with, so let's hope it's one of those. We stick in the call, as does the limper. Four ways to a flop, which comes eight, seven, six. Okay, that's a really interesting flop for us. The limper leads out for half pot after we checked, and the initial razor folds, small blind makes the call. So we could have pocket eights, eight, seven, eight, six, eight, nine, or eight, five, which is super strong. I like to be optimistic. Even like a king eight or ace eight is great here. In hindsight though, that $50 lead is also super strong, but nonetheless, I decide to jam it all in here. I quickly regret that as under the gun jams all in and the small blind snap calls for less. We're three ways all in with a side pot versus under the gun. Let's just see the run out though before we turn that second card over. It goes jack and then a 10. Under the gun shows pocket kings, very, very beatable. In sync, it seems like. I slap the seven of clubs over at the same time the small blind shows the same hand. Wow, we're actually taking down the side pot with two pair over kings and chopping up the main pot. What a sick spot. We peel a king in the hijack, we've got a stack to play with, and now we can look at our second card once we make it to the turn. There's a limp and open from an action player. I three bet him here to $60. Plan doesn't go perfectly when the small blind calls, but that's okay until the limper calls too and so does his action player. So we're likely gonna need some help when the flop comes 10-6-4 with the flush draw. Checks to me, I check it back, turn comes to deuce of clubs, and now we get to see what we raised with, and that hand is none other than king six offsuit. At least we've got a pair, right? The first two players check again, so I'm beginning to think we might actually have the best hand here. The action player I previously mentioned now bets $100. We've got about 250 in our stack and we're faced with a decision. This bet is strong into three opponents, but this guy's shown he likes to bluff, especially when he senses weakness. He could have a flush draw, a straight draw, a smaller pair, an airball bluff, a worse six. You get the point. Basically, we beat everything besides a 10. If he does have some sort of draw or if one or the other two players in the hand somehow has a 10, I think shoving all in is the best move. That way we can fold out better from the other two opponents and get called by worse from this guy. If we win, we will be unstuck from the entire night. We came this far, I go all in. The other players luckily fold and now it's up to the action player. Before he makes a move, he asks me if we can run it twice if he calls. That's normally a really good sign, but I say I only want to run it once because I'm pretty stuck tonight. He shrugs, flicks in the call, and we head to a river that I'm hoping is a brick, and it's a five of clubs. Not too bad, all things considered. I tell him what I've got, which is a pair of sixes, and he shows pocket jacks. We lose this one and are sent packing. Last hand for me is the queen of diamonds. We're on the button with 225 in our stack. We were into the game for 300, so let's get back to even. Jack opens in the cutoff for $10, and it's unfortunate that I'm on his left because he's kind of getting screwed here. I know he's doing this with only half of a visible hand and probably with cards less than a queen. So we've got a slam dunk isolation three bet in my opinion. I make it 40, and the big blind does not care about that isolation three bet. He cold calls, and Jack makes the fold. All right, so we're off to a flop heads up in position, which comes king king seven two hearts one diamond he checks we fire a c-bet of 60 and he check raises to 160 damn i mean maybe i should have just checked flop so i could get a guaranteed second card viewing by getting to the turn but honestly did not expect a check raise from this guy on this board i fold too tilted to even look at my second card it's time to go home <laughs> Let us know how we did in this challenge. I know we look absolutely ridiculous, but Jack, how do you think that went? I thought it went pretty well besides losing seven bullets. Uh, I was in for <laughs> $700, out for $0. I was in for $300, out for $130, and we've got one winner here. I won. I can't believe it. I was in for $200, and I was out for $325, so super lucky, <laughs> yeah. and I'm happy with that. All in all, probably not the best strategy, but let us know how you would play. Do not try this at home. And yeah, don't try it at home. Make sure to subscribe. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.